Hello YouTube, this is Matic Man. I'm bringing you another Dark Souls 2 video. Today, I want to talk a little bit about some of the rings in the game. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rank them in a tier system. Obviously, this is going to be pretty subjective. This is just my opinion on what I think some of the best PvP rings in the game are and why they're useful. Uh, I, hope, I hope some people find this helpful. Alright, we're going to start with tier zero this is the top of the list there's only going to be one ring in here uh, i don't think anyone's going to be too surprised by this choice it's going to be the third dragon ring the third dragon ring is quite powerful it's kind of like the new ring of favor and protection i believe it was called in the first game uh, the dragon ring increases your hp by 7.5 percent increases your stamina by 12.5 percent and increases your maximum load by 12.5 percent it's like a slightly worse life ring plus two and a slightly worse soldier ring plus two uh, put into the same ring and then also given a stamina percent increase so it's very powerful i don't think there's one pvp build that i've ever made where i didn't want that ring on that pvp build uh that's just how good it is as far as i know it's the only item in the game that gives you uh, more stamina, which is incredibly powerful. Maybe Velstat's helm does, but if it does, it's only one, which is nothing compared to the ring. Next up is Tier 1. It is composed of Gower's Ring of Protection, Illusory Ring of a Conqueror, and Illusory Ring of the Exalted. These three rings are in this tier because I think they are incredibly powerful, especially if you quote-unquote abuse them in PvP. For example, Gower's Ring of Protection prevents you from getting backstabbed, and it also prevents any damage that you take from behind. And you can take up to five different attacks until it eventually will break and then become useless. But until that happens, you can easily abuse its power, especially in PvP. Uh, one great example is in the Brotherhood of Blood Arena. If you're fighting someone and you decide, hey, I want to play not fair. I want to drink some Estus. You can easily unlock, spin around, drink the Estus, and it's pretty impossible for them to punish you for doing such a thing. The two other rings that I mentioned in Tier 1, the ones that make your either right or left hand weapon in completely invisible, uh, work in a similar way, in that if you sort of play to their advantages, they can be incredibly powerful. Uh, I don't even know all of the different weapons and tricks that people do with them. One thing I know is that Evelyn seems to be incredibly powerful, especially if you're switching between Evelyn and a melee weapon or something, because it's very hard to tell if the person is switching or not, and it keeps them both completely invisible no matter how many times you switch back and forth. Alright, it's time for Tier 2. This is really going to be the meat and the bones of what I think are the PvP rings. Uh, Leo Ring, Life Ring, plus 2. Soldier's Ring, plus two. Ring of Blades, plus two. Floranthi Ring, plus two. Clear Bluestone Ring, plus two. Southern Ritual Band, plus two. And the Abyss Seal. Obviously, some of these rings are only useful for builds they apply to. But I feel those rings, the situ those situational rings, are must-haves for their given build. Such as the Clear Bluestone Ring, plus two. If you plan on casting during PvP combat, I think that that ring is completely essential to your build. Another somewhat situational ring is the Old Leo Ring, which increases your counter damage on thrust attacks only by 12.5%. And that might not seem like a ton, but basically if you're thrusting and getting the counter, your weapon is doing 12.5% more damage, which is pretty powerful. And especially if you're dual wielding power stance. If your power is dancing, say, Ray Pierce, and you have the ring, you do a L1 counterattack, it's going to hit noticeably harder because it's essentially giving you 25% more damage since it applies to both weapons. Another somewhat situational ring is the Ring of Blades plus two. Uh, it'll give you 50 physical damage for your for your weapons. Um, and except if your weapon is used and it gets halved for the majority of weapons, there are exceptions. Some weapons get around 80% of the physical from the ring, even if they are infused. For this reason, choosing the Ring of Blades for a given build 
can be a little bit tricky. Uh, I would definitely check and see if your weapon or how much physical your particular weapon gets from the ring and go from there. Um, obviously, since it's a flat damage increase, it's obviously more useful the faster your weapon is since you're getting a higher percentage damage, essentially. The next situational ring is the Abyss Seal. Uh, gives you 20% more damage on your hexes at the cost of 30 life per cast, which I think is rather irrelevant. Um, I think this ring is incredibly powerful if you're planning on cast casting hexes. Next up is the Southern Ritual Band. Uh, this ring gives you three attunement slots just for putting it on. I think that's a pretty powerful effect. Especially the way the meta is heading. Uh, there's a ton of people that are using weapon buffs or maybe like one offensive spell. And a ring that gives you three slots for no investment just seems incredibly useful. Especially if you're almost a melee focus build that just wants a few slots. You can get three without any stat investment. I think that's very useful. One thing I've noticed too is that damage seems very hot in this game. What I mean by that is spells and even certain weapons just do a ton of damage. For example, daggers, backstab, and guard break, they do a ton of damage. Even riposte do a ton of damage. I think they do a little less than guard breaks and backstabs, but <laughs> that's not that's not the point. They still do a ton of damage. So I think having some more health can hopefully you can survive a little bit longer in fights and you can make a few more mistakes. Next up is the Soldier's Ring. This ring is quite good if you're going a more tanky build. If you have your vitality up pretty high, uh, it's going to give you a ton more equip load because it's percentage based. It gives you 20% more equip load. So I think this is completely essential if you want to wear heavy armor. And I probably saved the best ring for last. The Chloranthi Ring plus 2 is very useful. It gives you 25% increased stamina, regeneration, and speed. It's kind of a mouthful. But yeah, it basically makes your stamina bar regenerate 25% faster. Uh, this is very, very, very useful PvP. Stamina is essential. It lets you tag, lets you block, lets you roll, lets you parry, etc, etc, etc. Having yours recharge faster than your opponent's is an obvious advantage in a PvP situation. Well, I guess it's time for Tier 3. Tier 3 is all of the rings that give the different elements and spell resist. Stone Ring, Giant's Ring, Ring of Steel Protection, the Blue Stone Ring, Thorn Ring, and Sun Ring. Yeah, I don't think any of these rings are going to get me out of bed in the morning. But Sun Ring can be useful, I guess, if you're worried about stun locks. Same with the Ring of Thorns. I think those two rings just got nerfed a little bit hard, which is probably good. They were pretty overpowered when the game first came out. Blue Stone Ring, I, I feel like that might be really useful on a super tanky build. Stone Ring increases your weapon's poise damage by 10. I just haven't really found a great use for this. I think there's still some confusion on exactly what poise does. I know it gives hyper armor. Um, but again, do I want to spend a ring slot to try to get my opponent to not have hyper armor? I just seem, It just seems a little... Uh, if anyone disagrees with me, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to start a discussion about these rings and maybe have some of them have some weird uses that I just haven't found yet. As far as I'm concerned, the Giant's Ring is in the same category as the Stone Ring. The plus two version of the Giant's Ring gives you 30 boys. I'm just not too sure how useful that is. All right, it's time for the last tier. This video is dragging on. Tier four is gonna be the Red Tier Stone Ring. All of the Covenant Rings that give you damage to particular schools of spells, besides the Abyss Ring, obviously. And then the Ring of Prayer, and then the Ring of Knowledge. Ultimately, I just don't think any of these rings are really worth one of your ring slots in PvP. You can either level up stats to make up for not having the ring, and use a ring that's more beneficial. And now some odds and ends. The Bleed Ring, the Poison Ring, and the Vanquisher's Seal, which increases your fist's damage. Obviously all these rings are very good if you build those builds, but if you're not going a particular build, they're kind of awful. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Uh, please start some discussions in the comments below. That would be awesome. I hope you found this helpful and or interesting. Uh, yeah, thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to subscribe to my channel.